do a little bit more SAT prep. Right now we're doing 2.9.16, which is practice test two, question number, uh, section number nine, question number 16. Uh, so this is the last question in the section, and this is an old SAT prep book. So the questions got harder as the questions moved on, meaning this is the hardest question in this section based on the way the SAT book uh, was designed at that time. So if x is an integer greater than 1, and if y equals x plus 1 plus uh, 1 over x, rather, which of the following must be true? So the first thing I want to highlight is how I went out of my way to underline must be true. So the easiest thing to do here is if you can find a counterexample that disproves one of these, uh, you're done right away. So I say that because it's very easy to disprove too quickly. So uh, no, the Roman numeral two, not two of them, just Roman numeral two. So uh, Roman numeral one says y is not equal to x, uh, which we'll get to in a minute. That one's actually going to be easier to look at the converse, like look at what would happen if y was equal to x, and uh, we'll be able to show whether that's true or false. The second one says y is an integer. Now I can disprove number two very quickly. So I'm allowed to pick any x that is greater than one. So all I have to do is pick an x greater than one and show that y does not come out to be an integer. So I'm going to go ahead and pick x is two, which is the easiest number that I can think of for x uh, that is an integer greater than one. And I'm going to show that y would be a two plus a one half, which is a 2.5. That is not an integer. Right, that is not an element of z, which is how we say integers. It's not for z integers. Uh, so uh, two is definitely false, right? And they said which ones must be true. So I can immediately cross off any answers that involve two being true, which is both answer C, one and two only, and answer E that says all of them. So now I'm really at the point where Unfortunately, I'm going to have to prove both one and three because I either have answers that say one only or answers that say three only or an answer that says both of them work. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to go through some work to figure out if one and three are true. So here's what I know. Uh, let's look at number one. So in number one, they said to show that y does not equal x. Well, I'm going to see what happens if I try the reverse option. What if y was the same as x, right? If y were to be the same as x, right, if y were the same as x, I could say x equals x plus 1 over x. And when I subtract this x to the other side, I get 0 equals 1 over x. Well, that's a big fat lie. The reason that I know it's a lie is that for a fraction to equal 0, the top of the fraction has to equal 0, right? Like if I, tr so, so the top of this fraction is a 1. There's nothing I can put on the bottom that's going to make this equal zero. Now, some of you folks that are looking ahead at calc are looking at limits and saying, well, what happens if x is infinitely large? Uh, and I see you well played. But realistically, the only way for a fraction to actually be zero is if the top is zero. Uh, you can also see that by multiplying this x over, and you would get zero equals one, which again, I stand by the fact that that is a big fat math lie, which means y equals x is a lie. So that must mean that this statement, which is the opposite of y equaling x, it's saying y is not equal to x, is true, which means that I can rule out the one that says 3 only. So now it's either 1 only, which I've already shown works, or 1 and 3. So now it's my job to see if 3 works. These multiple, multiple choice questions show up a lot when we get to AP Calc after we get through the SAT. Uh, so let's look at 3. So if I were to look at 3, uh, which says xy is greater than x squared, xy is greater than x squared. If I wanted, I could divide both sides by x. Now, normally I would tell you you are not allowed to do that. The reason I would tell you you can't divide both sides by x is because x could be zero and you're losing the answer where x equals zero. But because they went out of their way to say that x is an integer greater than one, I know that x is non-zero which means I can go ahead and divide both sides of this by x. Not only is it non-zero, x is positive because it's bigger than one. So when I divide by x, I don't have to worry about flipping the direction of the inequality sign. So I get y is bigger than x, right? And you might say, okay, that's cool, uh, but how do I know if that's true? Well, the other statement that we know is that y is the same as x plus one over x, which is bigger than x. Well, since x is a positive number, this is some sort of positive quantity, right? If you take x and add a positive quantity to it, you get a number that is bigger than the original x. So sure enough, 3 is also true, and my answer is D, 1 and 3 only. Now, there were other ways to figure that out. Technically, you wouldn't be proving it if you just plugged in a ton of x numbers and a ton of y numbers. Um, but you'd be able to prove it. Another way that you could show that this works, if you didn't like my idea of dividing by x, uh, and this didn't occur to me at first, but it would totally work. Another way to show number three, which is arguably easier than what I did, 
because sometimes we don't spot the easy way when we first start doing something. Another way to do something that's arguably easier is to take this y equals the quantity x plus 1 over x and replace y with an x plus a 1 over x is bigger than x squared. Well, if I do that, I get x squared plus 1 is bigger than x squared, and that is quite clearly true, right? x squared plus a 1 is bigger than an x squared. That's true, so again, your answer is D.